In this webcast, you'll learn how ADP uses IBM DB2 Query Monitor to proactively identify poorly performing SQL queries. Our speakers for today's webcast are Sahi Amir Soyamani, Solutions Architect, IBM Software Group, Information Management, and Rachel Nuvetsky, Technology Consultant 2, Senior DBA, Automatic Data Processing, Inc. At this time, I'd like to hand it over to our first speaker, Sahi Amir Soyamani. Sahi? Hello, everyone. I'm Sahi Amir Soleimani, and first and foremost, I'd like to thank you for joining us today to look at how a day in the life of a DBA at ADP and see how they use IBM's offerings to help the DBAs tune queries and optimize performance to reduce cost. Over two years ago, I had the great fortune of meeting Rachel and her team at ADP. At that time, ADP consisted of two senior DBAs, three junior DBAs to support over 33 application databases across 30 DB2 subsystems. I had no clue how they could manage that type of workload. Like many large, highly competitive businesses, ADP didn't have an effective way to monitor, track, or optimize performance performing SQL, and no good advice on techniques for tuning SQL. They were constantly firefight in firefighting mode, not to mention short-staffed. So the staff was spending valuable time tuning SQL statements, statement by statement, and never achieving the consistently optimal results it expected. What is needed was a way to tune SQL across the workload, both proactively and reactively. This would enable ADP to monitor, manage, and ultimately automate tedious tasks and repetitive tasks, as well as meet its SLA goals and reduce CPU. Today, we will show you how they took on that task and achieved it down to a fraction of what was original cost. First, we'll go over who ADP is, a brief overview of query monitor and query workload tuner, then Rachel will go more in depth on how ADP uses these tools to help with both reactive and proactive performance resolutions. And most important, their performance success stories on using these tools. Then we'll give you some time to ask us some questions. ADP grosses over 10 billion in revenues, has approximately 570,000 clients, and is one of the world's largest providers of business outsourcing solutions. Leveraging over 60 years of experience, ADP offers a wide range of human resource, payroll, tax, benefits, and administrative solutions for a single source. ADP's sing easy-to-use solutions for employees provide superior value to companies of all types and sizes. ADP is the leading provider of integrated computing solutions to auto, truck, motorcycle, marine, and recreational vehicles, and a high heavy equipment dealers throughout the world. Now let's take a look at what Query Monitor and our tools are. DB2 Query Monitor arms DBAs with the ability to spot trouble before it can cause significant waste in DB2 resources, as well as identify the details of the existing problem with, an ease, with ease and clarity. It allows the DBAs to look up details of the SQL errors, look up performance of the SQL statements for a given DB2 job and program, identify trouble at SQL. It allows them to look up by object, program, SQL statements, and job name. Sort by the SQL by the highest CPU consumptions, I.O., elapsed time consumptions. It collects and summarizes this information and displays the SQL resource consumption down to the level of an individual SQL text statement. It provides the DB2 object access statistics down to the individual table and index level. DBAs can view historical data from the vSAM backstores or DB2 tables. It enables users to view current activity. Furthermore, it collects and displays DB2 command history, as well as collects and displays negative SQL information, provides exception monitoring, and collects information relating to the exceptional SQL-related events with a complete picture of environment surrounding that, the event. Now let's take a look at Query Workload Tuner. This is a performance optimization solution that offers a comprehensive step-by-step -step approach for isolating, diagnosing, and resolving performance problems pre- and post-production, spanning both the application and the database. This solution empowers the organization in the level of it empowers both the DBAs and the developers to prevent problems before they impact the business via early warnings and emergent bottlenecks. That it allows them to give fast isolation to problems and proactively identify high-cost problems early. They are, they are allowed to improve the quality of service and increase application availability. 
It reduces the cost both in terms of improved system throughput and improved organizational productivity and effectiveness. And, and last but not least, it frees up the DBA's times for value creation activities. Remember, when an application database performance goes south, so does the business. How long does it take to respond? Replacing repetitive and reactive manual diagnostic collection with proactive end-to-end -end database performance monitoring to respond to performance issues before they affect the business. These solutions help you proactively detect emergent problems, offload inactive data to streamline queries, and get expert advice on improving access performance. More predictable application response times, effective proactive performance monitoring, and easy effective solutions empowers the ADP DBAs to take charge of their database environment. Now with the streamlined approach of expert advisors that Query Workload 2 provides, it gives DBAs expert advice on tuning queries. First, Query Workload Tuner makes it easy for them to get queries for tuning. DBAs can grab them from the DB2 catalog, the DB2 statement and cache. They can grab them from Query Monitor, as we have seen and files and text. They can simply just copy and paste them into the tool. Then the DBAs can select the advisors and run and evaluate the query or the workload. And the workload is important. Rather than taking statement by statement, they can look at a group of statements as a whole and analyze them. The query tuner gives advisors, has expert advisors to help the DBAs to improve query design, give advice on statistics quality for Identify statistics that need to be gathered or that are outdated or conflicting or missing. Create indexes to reduce scans, for example, indexing on foreign keys and queries that do not have indexes defined. Create indexes that would improve filtering or avoid sorts. Or indexes that would fully satisfy the query without going over the data rows at all. It also provides access path advice. Sometimes you need to get access to know how to improve access plan selection, and it also gives that kind of advice. Clearly, application performance is tightly tied to customer satisfaction, revenue generation, and organizational productivity, and infra infrastructure costs. And the ability to have optimized queries and production applications is a key contributor to application performance. Unfortunately for ADP, the performance and scalability of application SQL was getting less and less attention in pre-production. Aggressive project delivery schedules, the increasing of the use of application frameworks to generate that SQL, and the disconnection between development organizations and DBA organizations were contributing factors. Once in production, application performance was not set for life. Applications slowed down over time, and because of the increased workload and changes in the database environment, oftentimes applications outgrew the original design parameters. But today you'll see how these query tuning solutions and monitoring became a critical skill for ADP organization to maintain and enhance that solution. So now I'll hand it off to Rachel so she can show you how they use that advice to achieve their business SLAs. Thank you, Sahi, and thanks for the introduction, and thanks for the overview. Um, hello, everybody. I'm Rachel Niedreski. You can just call me Rachel. I'm here to discuss ADP's experience with the tools, both QM and OQWT. Just a quick little background. I've been in the industry for 26 years. I've been working for ADP as a DBA for 12 years. And I can assure you that these tools have done huge, huge improvements to our productivity with regard to resolving performance issues. Today we're going to pretty much focus on the way we were able to accomplish this, and I will share some success stories with you. In slide eight, where we're at right now, basically I'm just giving you um, an idea. There's two different ways that we have to address performance issues. One is reactive, and the other is proactive. Reactive would be examples like somebody giving us a call or opening up a, a help desk ticket saying this job has been running for eight hours. It normally runs an hour. Please take a look, see what's wrong with it. Another one is something like what we've implemented here at ADP, which is running a daily report that gives us a list of the top 25 CPU consumers, the highest CPU consumers running in our production environment. The proactive method would be, of course, reviewing SQL statements, reviewing and doing analysis on them prior to them even going out into production, ensuring that they're optimal and they're going to perform the best that they can. Um, as we know, it takes a lot of manpower to do these types of SQL reviews, to be proactive. Although we'd like 
you know, every shop would like to be proactive more than reactive. Reality is the majority of our performance issues come to us in a reactive manner. Slide nine. Our top 25 CPU usage report, basically, we're, we run these reports on a daily basis. They list our top 25 CPU consumers, starting with the worst going down to the less worst. And what we do is right now we, we take the report, we pick out the first job on the report, we use QM, and then we use OQWT to actually try to evaluate and try to come up with a resolution. With QM, we're able to quickly drill down, identify the problem SQL for a specific program that runs in the job. And I don't know about your shops, but in our shop, most of our jobs run on average 10 to 20 programs. So imagine if you were told that this program is running for eight hours and you need to find out which program in that job down to which SQL in that program is causing the CPU consumption. It would be the most complicated task to do if you didn't have a tool like QM. I know some of you have used PM in the past. You can do that too, but it's running reports, going through the reports, trying to identify it, going through, you know, looking at the explains, et cetera, et cetera. With QM, it takes minutes, literally. And when I say minutes, I mean within two to three minutes, you can actually find the problem SQL statement, maybe even statements. Once these are identified, we're able to take those using Query Workload Tuner. We're able to actually run them through the various advisors and see what the recommended fixes are, what the recommendations for improvement are, and then address each one of those. Slide 10. Here's an example of our top 24 user report. Like I said, we're basically, we show a bunch of our job names to the left. There's, you know, the, the, the type, whether it's the DB2 call, in most cases that's a, it's a batch job, uh, the date, the time. So we have all this information. We know when the job ran. We know the, the duration. We know the CPU consumption. So it's very easy for us even to use a tool like QM to actually drill down knowing the date, and the time that this ran so we can actually narrow it down to a particular interval within QM and identify the problem SQL very quickly. Slide 11. Query monitor. Basically, it identifies the culprit. Like I said earlier, we can actually quickly go in there, identify the query of the respective program or programs that are using the majority of the CPU or doing the highest I.O. consumption. Slide 12. Okay, what Sahi showed you earlier is basically the, the PC version of Query Monitor, which we have here as well. We also have it on the mainframe, which is just as easy to use. Basically, we go into Query Monitor, and as you can see, the various options, we can see if there was an abend. We can look at the, you know, programs that obtained a bad SQL code, get the reasons, find the SQL that actually incurred the, the problem. In our case, we're looking at option one, which is viewing the activity summary. And here we're able to quickly drill down, like I said, down to the SQL statement from this screen on, literally within a minute or two. Slide 13. Over here on this screen, again, you could see that we're in Query Monitor. Now we've actually drilled down. We've gotten to the SQL statements that ran for a given program. And we have it sorted in CPU time descending order. So we can actually see the queries that actually use the most CPU time. Let's go right to slide 14. You're actually able to see, I highlighted, where you see the, the culprit. We're able to quickly identify that first query there. It used the majority of the processing time for this entire job. And you can also see the program that was executing that query. So within a couple of minutes, we're able to quickly identify the program and the problem SQL statement. Now we're ready to try to present some sort of a resolution to this performance issue. Slide 15. This is just basically showing everybody the we were able to find the query. If you type in the V next to it, or I forgot, I think it's 17 if you're using the numbers, you're able to determine or see the entire SQL statement. At this point, we normally copy and paste it 
if you're using the PC version, it's even easier to just take that query and port it into OQWT. In our case, we basically just copy the SQL statement, and we use that SQL statement to put into Query Workload Tuner in order to run advisors against it to see what's going on, to see what OQWT would recommend to us as far as how we can improve this query. Slide 16. OQWT. When we go into this tool, again, this is a PC-driven tool, it's very simple to just go in, click New, open up a new Query Tuner project. We specify, which you're not going to see on here because, again, we're not basically teaching you how to use the tool, but we're actually specifying which DB2 subsystem we want to point to. In this case, we're able to point to our production subsystem. You could also point to a QA system if you have considerable data, which would give you significant statistics from the catalog. Slide 17. And we actually get into the part where now we can provide the query that we're going to be running the advisors against. So just like I showed you before, we copy the query from QM, we put it here, and now we're going to run the advisors against it to let OQWT give us the recommendation. Going on to slide 18. So now we actually click and we run the advisors, and it starts processing. It goes through all the various advisors, the query advisor, the access plan advisor, the index advisor, the stats advisor, and it actually starts to compile a report for us. Slide 19. When the advisors are finished, it brings you to this screen here, which is the summary, and it actually starts showing you all the recommendations from the various advisors, showing it by severity. So the ones that are the highest severity are going to show up on top, et cetera, and going down to low and, uh, you know, any other different types of severities. It's going to give it to you with the worst going down to the least. And that advisor, in most cases, from our own experience, has always shown up. There's always some kind of missing stat. In some cases, it's definitely helped us with the performance. It's actually made a huge change. In some cases, we implement the stats, and it hasn't made much of a change to the performance. So then we go and we tackle the other recommendations from the other advisors, whether it's the index or access plan or query, et cetera. It's really easy. When you get the stats, if we go to the next screen, which is slide 20, if you double-click on the stats advisor, it will bring you to the next screen, which actually shows you the specific run stats command for what it thinks you need to execute in order to bring statistics more current to try to help improve that SQL's performance. On this screen, you can actually click the little green arrow button. I have a blue arrow pointing to it. And you can actually execute the run stats right against the mainframe, right against your subsystem. And at that point, you can actually refresh and rerun the advisors to see if anything has changed with regard to their recommendation. In most cases, the stats part goes away, and then you're left with whatever other one or two or three advisor recommendations are there. Slide 21. The access path advisor, which is the next advisor that showed up on our summary report, will actually flag and it'll tell you what it suspects needs to be changed or needs to be improved in order to give you a better access path. In that little box that I have highlighted in red, it actually gives you the recommendation. It'll actually tell you what to look out for. In most cases, it could be leading to a new index, a modified index, or maybe a change to a query. You know, maybe the predicate needs to be changed within the query. Go to slide. The index advisor, which is one of the other advisors that showed up on our summary report, actually told us that it recommends an index or a change to an index, and it will give you specifications. It will tell you what the, the index should look like, what the columns should be, in what order. And then it's really cool. It gives you an estimated performance improvement. It says, okay, you will improve your performance by, you know, X percentage. And it tells you how much DASD, remember, it's based on the subsystem you're pointing at. So whatever the volume is on the subsystem you're pointing at, whatever the catalog has for volume, it's going to calculate what this new index, 
how much space it's going to require. You know, and as DBAs, we have to take both pieces into consideration, the improvement and how much space and also the cost of putting an additional index. We always keep that in consideration. But, again, it's giving you that information right up front. We'll talk more about how we're able to verify that next few slides. Slide 23. The other nice thing it does for us is that summary report, although it shows us that quick summary on our screen through the tool, it also creates a summary report. If you look to the left, I have highlighted in yellow the summary advisory report. If you click on that, it actually brings this report, which is in a really nice HTML format. It actually gives you, with built-in links, all the different sections where it recommended statistics changes, where it recommended any index changes, where it recommended any query changes, access plan advisor, where it recommended any access plan changes that you have to be aware of. It all shows up in this report, and the way we use it within our shop is we actually save these reports to our PC, and we email it to the programmer or to the application team and say, here, here's a summary of that query, and here's what we recommend you should do with it. So they have it in black and white. They have the information in front of them to look at in addition to any benchmarking that we've done to prove to them that this would be a, a beneficial change. Slide 24. We've had some really incredible success stories, very recent. I'm going to tell you right now, within the past three months, in addition to identifying problems with SQL statements where we simply running a run stat, you know, gave us a huge improvement, our top 25 CPU success story, we actually have been able to tackle. We're actually on our fourth job in the list, tackling them on a day-to-day -day basis where we're actually able to find huge performance gains based on the recommendations from the advisor. And you can see in this case, there was a job that was number one on our report for months. Every day it showed up as the number one CPU consumer for months. We sent the summary report, as I showed you in the previous screen, to the developers. We verified with them what the expected performance improvement would be. We benchmark some of the recommendations and had them also make some SQL changes between our index change and their SQL changes, and we came up with the following improvement showing an 80% reduction in CPU cost. That is huge. And I'll tell you right now, with this process, we actually, between us benchmarking the index change and the programmer making the few SQL changes that were recommended by the tool, we actually were able to accomplish this within a couple of days. And that's actually pretty impressive. For, and this job was huge. This is one of our largest update jobs on a, that we run on a daily basis. So this is a, a really big, big success story for us. Going to slide two, we have another success story that I'm going to share. Basically, we have this other job, which is number two on our list, that runs all day, Tuesday through Saturday. It's basically an asynchronous job that runs throughout the day. It runs all day long as it receives feeds, it wakes up, and it processes them. Through QM, again, able to identify the most expensive SQL, verifying that that was causing the majority of the processing time. We were able to generate the OQWT advisory report. We implemented the recommendations where it actually said to add a new index on one of these tables that was being scanned, and we got a 70% CPU improvement. And Basically, the query was a select count because they want to know how many rows they're deleting with a delete from. And obviously, as you can see from the report down below, the delete from portion was the part that was killing us. And once we implemented, we added this index, which was a very small index to add, the improvement was huge. And you can see that by the, looking at the total cost column. These numbers, again, are we got, you can get them either from the um, plan tables, the DSN statement tables that are produced on the mainframe, or you can actually pull these right out of the um, OQWT summary report. And the numbers are usually pretty close. Going to slide 26. SQL reviews. Okay, so now we're going to more of a proactive approach, okay? You've seen how we've handled reactive approaches. And again, like, as you were able to see, we're able to reduce the amount of time it takes for us to resolve a problem significantly. Same thing with SQL reviews. There's not enough hours in the day for 
the DBAs to actually run sequel reviews on every single sequel written in every single program. I don't know. Sahi went over um, earlier about our within our abstract where we're literally three DBAs supporting the entire DB2 databases here at ADP, and that's just that's, that's impossible to, to be able to incorporate SQL reviews on a day-to-day basis. So what happened is the application team came up with this process here that's called Dart Reviews, which is their DB2 application review template. They actually have three senior developers up there that are very, very versed in DB2, SQL, uh, indexes, structures, etc. And they run these reviews where the application programmer brings the program, any new program or updated program that requires changes or additions of SQL to these meetings. Most of the SQL are pretty straightforward, you know, inserts or single selects, something that's pretty simple. In some cases, they have queries where the access path is showing either an index scan, possibly a table scan, uh, possibly uh, an index match column one where the column it's matching on, it has low cardinality. So you're not going to get your best performance. So what we did is we incorporated OQWT advisor reports to allow our developers to run them. So now our developers actually within this group will take any queries that stand out as a possible problem, will run it through OQWT, create summary reports, and go back to the developer and say, here, these are some recommendations. If some of these recommendations involve an index change, then they come back to us. They get the DBAs involved, and that's when we come into the picture. Between the time the programmer brings their program to this group and by the time we get involved, we're not in the picture. And it's really nice. It saves a lot of time for the DBA. And it also gives the developer a much faster way to find recommendations or resolutions for bad SQL. Slide 27. Here's an example of the SQL reviews. Okay, this is taken from a, a Query Workload Tuner advisor report that was created recently by one of our developers. I asked him to send it to me because it actually gave them some suggestion for the query. The query advisor highlighted a portion of the query, and this is actually straight from that summary report. If you look at the query advisor section, it actually highlights in your query, in red, what part of your query needs to be revisited and where you need to take a look and make possible changes. And if you look over to the right there, it actually gives you the recommendation number if you go back to the recommendation number in this report, it actually gives you a little verbiage on what it thinks you should look at doing, possibly removing a sort or possibly changing, you know, the index you're using, maybe point to additional columns, maybe possibly, you know, create an index if you can't make the change. But it actually tells you where in the query the problem lies that's causing the increased CPU or I.O. Pretty neat. Why 28. Um, the summary report, like I said, I, I mentioned earlier, the summary report also gives you all the cost and the time for the problem query. So here I can easily see what the cost is for the query that I'm running the advisor report on. It'll tell me exactly right now, this query as it is today, that I'm running in this report, what the cost is to run it. And the nice thing is, I'll show you, let's just go right to the next screen, slide 29. What we've done is we go ahead to the programmer, we give them the recommendation, they go ahead and make some of the query changes, and then they rerun the advisor after they've made several query changes, and then they compare. They compare the cost. This screen that I have here, this report, this doesn't show up on the summary report. All we did was we copy and pasted into an Excel spreadsheet the, the lines that show up on the report, report, the first report, the second report, the third report, and I just wrote to the left, I added a column, I call it option one, two, three, and these were the three options that we made changes to to the query to improve performance. And as you can see, option three was good. It was still better than option one, which was the original. But option two was clearly the best solution that gave us the best results in reducing CPU and I.O. for this query. And believe it or not, the programmer was able to do this within a day and a half. I mean, that's that's pretty impressive. And this query, just so everybody knows, was six pages long. <laughs> yeah. So you try looking through that with your eyes. 
Um, so we verify this. Now, again, there's a lot of curious minds out there. Big question would say, well, how do you know the numbers that this tool puts out here are accurate? Like, it, it just generates a number, total cost. How do you know that cost is accurate? How do we, I know that it's really going to be an 80% savings? How do I know? Well, we have the same question. So what we did is we took the different queries. We created a, a batch DSN TEP2 job, a batch spoofy job. We ran each of these queries through it. We got the results. We benchmarked it. We actually went into Query Monitor to actually look at the CPU, the elapsed time, the get pages, and believe it or not, they were off by only 1% or 2% with what we saw here. So the OQWT costs that they show you here are very accurate, at least accurate for the environment that you're running these against. Again, you're pointing to a particular subsystem when you're running all this, but they're very accurate. Um, we have some DBAs out in India that have done a lot of uh, work for us, helping us do this, and... I actually asked one of our, our DBAs out there, you know, can you give me a summary? Because she recently did one that really, that, the one that gave us the 80% savings. And I said, I, I just want to know, how long did it take you from start to finish using these tools to determine how you could get this 80% savings? And basically, and this is in her, her words, using QMPM and OQWT took one hour. Testing the indices took six hours as the query was very complex and it took time to understand which block in the query was the bad performer. So basically, in total, it took less than a day for one DBA to identify a production performance issue and identify the improvement and have a solution for the applications and for us. So, I mean, that's incredible. It's, it's less than a day for a production problem that's been hitting us and showing as number one on our CPU report for several months. Slide 31. So thank you for joining us today, and um, I hope it was helpful. Again, I'm not here to sell. I don't get anything back from IBM or, or Rocket Software or anything. I'm just basically telling the truth. This tool has done amazing work for us as far as reducing the time it takes for us to resolve our production issues. Uh, the productivity is, is incredible with what we've gained from it. So um, that's all I have to say. Thank you again. Once again, thank you for joining us. Uh, my name is Sahi Amir Soleimani. If you need to contact anybody about any questions about these products, please feel free to contact me. My email address is in the beginning of the deck and at the end.